hello to anyone new to this channel and also hello to anyone who is familiar familiar with this channel. Some of you will know me as the Spider Pan of Neverland. I am the host here at the Fandom Nexus. You can find us at NeverlandPodcast.com, right here on YouTube, or mainly we have an audio version that you're going to find uh, if you just, any any podcast aggregator can find us as Neverland, the Fandom Nexus, uh, formerly known as the Neverland Podcast, uh, formerly to Disney and beyond. I mean, it's we've been around, this is my ninth year, been around for a long time, but uh, I'm doing something a little different today. Normally, as you might deduce from what you're seeing kind of behind me in my office, uh, we have a lot of Marvel and Star Wars. Uh, we've we used to be very Disney focused, and I'm even wearing Mickey Mouse today. Uh, we do all have a lot of fun with uh, a lot of uh, geek culture, I guess you would say, video games and movies and anything else that's, that we're having fun with a good dose of nostalgia. That's normally what we'd have here, but what I'm doing today is kind of something special with Natasha of the Little Bits of Bliss podcast, where I'm collaborating with some other podcasts, and uh, we're all sharing some uh, devotional thoughts from the Bible of how God relates to us and how God speaks to us, and I have chosen something that uh, I think hopefully uh, will reach you as it does me. This is one of my favorites. So there we go. Uh, and if you want to follow along, I've got it up here on screen. Isaiah 53, and I'm going to pick up at verse 3 and read up uh, through 4. I, I might touch into to 5, because uh, I, I do want to bring up that what's neat about this is this is Old Testament. This is before Jesus was even born on this earth, and here it is describing him in detail. Uh, there's lots of prophecies in the Bible and about the Messiah, and Jesus fulfilled every one. And this is one I find particularly relatable, and hopefully you will too. But let's read this together. I'm going to look like I'm not looking at you because I'm going to be looking up at my screen to read it. Uh, so, he was despised and abandoned by men, a man of great pain and familiar with sickness. And like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we had no regard for him. However, it was our sickness that he bore himself or that he himself bore, and our pains that he carried. Yet we ourselves assume that he had been afflicted, struck down by God, and humiliated. Now, this, of course, is talking about a lot of uh, things where we're seeing Christ being rejected by a lot of people, and we see him in his walk as Messiah, uh, where, where he's eventually going to be crucified, and he's going to, you know, the, the passion story, if you're not familiar with, uh, you know, get into it. But the things that I want you to look at here, him being a man of great pain and familiar with sickness. And where it later says, however, it was our sickness that he himself bore. Now, of course, he bore our sins, our sicknesses with him to take and die on the cross. He died to take our sicknesses and sins away. Um, now, granted, we're still going to get sick here in our mortal body, but, you know, that's a whole other issue. But what I want you to focus on, he is familiar. And the other translations say he is familiar with grief. Uh, the the important thing to the, you, to think about with Jesus is his mission, of course, was to come here to die, to take away the sins of the world. But if that was the only reason he'd come, he could have been born and died the very next day. But he lived here for over 30 years. He taught us and he lived the human experience. He understands what it is to be a human. He understands us. He relates to us. As it says, it was our sickness that he himself bore. He has been through everything like we, you know, maybe not in the exact same way because we're in a, living in a modern time, but he has grieved, you know, he's grieved at the death of a friend. He has been through sickness. He, he might have even been bullied when he was a kid. He lived a human life. The difference is that he was sinless, but he understands what we're going through in our human life when we have our griefs and what we have to suffer stuff when, when a family member or a friend dies or when we're going through sicknesses, he bore those. He understands. We have no reason that we cannot go to him uh, and just pour out our hearts when we are grieving and when we are hurting for whatever reason and when we're stressed. We can go to him and he understands. I mean, he worked as a carpenter. He had to work and he had made a living before he walked around the earth and was basically homeless. There was nowhere for him to lay his head. He, he, he went around about his teaching as a homeless person, really, and just leaned on God's provision. But he knows what it's like to suffer through things and to sleep out in the cold, uh, you know, on a cold night. He's, he's been there. So whatever you're going through, when you're going through it, 
never, never be afraid to come to him with it. Even if you're not asking for anything, but just for the comfort of having someone to talk to, you can talk to him. You are in a re- if you if you've received him, you are in a relationship with him. God is your father, and like any like in a good dad. I don't know what your your dad was like here on earth, but a father who will listen and cares for his children, even when his answer to your prayer is no. Some people say, oh, you know, there's even a song that says God's greatest gift is unanswered prayer. God doesn't. There are no such thing as unanswered prayers. Just sometimes he says no, or or sometimes he says wait. But uh, you have to just kind of learn to trust him on whatever those answers are. But he knows what you're going through. He knows your needs, even before you bring him to him. But he loves it when you bring that to him. He loves the prayers of his people, and he can relate to you. He's been there. He knows. But I do want to go ahead and read further because it was it's important when we get into five. But he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. I'll even read six. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, but the Lord has caused the wrongdoing of us all to fall on him. And that is the gospel message right there. He took your sins, all your wrongdoings, to, with him on that cross. He offers a free gift to you salvation, freedom from your sins, and to take you into his heaven, his eternity. And it's a free gift. And all you have to do is receive it. And you can pray right now to him. Tell him, put your trust in him. Tell him you believe that he died for you and that he can take you to heaven and that you you believe that you are a sinner. Because yeah, it's not hard to believe. I'm sure you've told a lie in your life at, at the least. But yeah, well, all of us are sinners. But just confess to him, confess that you believe in him, and put your faith and trust in him and receive his gift. Just ask for it, and he'll give it to you. Ask him to come into your life. Some people say, well, ask God into your heart. Ask Jesus into your heart. Well, you're you're doing more. You're asking him into your life. You're letting him be Lord, and you're trusting in him that he alone is your salvation. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. You never could. But he'll give it to you for free. But then, of course, as an act of your faith and uh, and your appreciation, you will do some good works. You'll do a lot of good in this world, and God will begin to change your heart and change your mind and transform you into a new person altogether to be more like him. But that's all I've got to say. Yeah, God can relate to you. He's been through it. He's been through it, and he's waiting for you to receive him. But anyways, once again, I'm Jeremy the Spider Pan from NeverlandPodcast.com, known as Neverland the Fandom Nexus. And Natasha from Bits and Bliss, I'd like to thank her for letting me be a part of this collaboration and uh, continue on this playlist. And you have a blessed day.